Today's video is about this Fit4 action camera, the $60 Amazon GoPro alternative. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, show you some footage, and give you my opinion on whether or not it's any good. Let's go over the basics. As you can see plainly on the front, you can shoot all the way up to 4K Ultra HD, as well as slow motion, 1080p60, all the hits. It's Wi-Fi connected, which is really convenient. You can wirelessly import your footage to other devices, which is really convenient for me since I shoot on my phone. I can just connect to this and I've got the footage so I can easily edit it. It's really cool. On the back, we've got our little LCD screen so you can see what you're doing, line up the shot, and navigate the menus. There are navigation buttons on the side, the shutter button, the power and mode selection buttons, this camera also does take up to 12 megapixel still photos, wide angle still photos, which is pretty cool. I don't use it that much. It's also got time lapse and stuff. Also, something I haven't really messed with, I'm just typically uh, using it for HD video. The maximum micro SD card size it'll take is 32 gigs. And as you can see there, the power port on the right and an HDMI cable input on the left. So that's pretty much it. The basics. Nice, cheap GoPro alternative. Let's look at all the stuff that it comes with. So in addition to the camera itself, you get this nice carrying case to hold all your stuff. You, of course, get your charger, a couple of stick-on mounts, which will come in handy. you got to find a place to put those. Various extensions, mount accessories. I don't know what these tethers and zip ties are for. I'll have to figure that out. You get a head strap, a little clip-on mount for the head strap, a spare back door for the waterproof case, which works. I'll do a little demonstration of that. A cool little remote control that uh, either does photos or starts recording video, starts and stops recording video, which is cool. And you also get a spare battery, which you're going to need. Because the battery life on this camera actually kind of sucks. I tried to do a little bit of a torture test on it. It lasted maybe 30 or 40 minutes before it got really hot and just ran out of battery. So that's kind of a downside if you're hoping to do some long format video. And speaking of long format video, this camera only records video clips that are a maximum of 10 minutes long. Every 10 minutes, it splits the video into a new clip. I don't know if GoPros do that. It seems kind of dumb, but uh, I guess it is what it is. I haven't tried to splice two clips together to see if they come together seamlessly. We might have to find out about that. But a battery lasting about a half hour, that's, that's enough for me especially since the track sessions at Track Night in America, which I'm going to be using this for, they're only 20 minutes long, so a couple of these batteries should do me one evening at the track. I almost forgot. Up there, on the rearview mirror, it's like a handlebar mount meant for, like, bicycles and stuff, but on the rearview mirror is a perfect front-facing camera location for when you're at the racetrack, or if you wanted to use something like this, on your daily drive as a dash cam, that'd be really convenient. So really, for 60 bucks, all the stuff you get here, it's a pretty good value, relatively speaking. I'm sure if you bought all the GoPro equivalent stuff, it would probably be hundreds of dollars. But you get all this for 60 bucks. The camera leaves a little bit of battery life to be desired, but as far as I'm concerned, it meets my purposes, so I'm not too worried about it. You get what you pay for at some point, but luckily for me, this was a Christmas present. Now let's check out the in-camera navigation. I'll show you through the menus and all the stuff you can do in there. Power on. And there we go. So you've got your remaining space left. You've got about three hours with a 32 gig which is the real gut punch, because the battery only lasts a half hour, but hey, what are you going to do? Up there, it shows you what camera mode you're in and what quality you're shooting at. Your battery down there, I kind of wish it was a percentage. It's just a three-tiered battery thing, so you're actually not quite sure when you're going to run out of battery. So to open up the menu, up arrow, 
and it gives you these options. And then on the front, see how it says mode? You can go, that's playback for video, playback for photos, and then you hit it again, and it sends you to all the settings, which you use the shutter button in there. Now you can navigate with these buttons through here. You can choose your video resolution. You have to manually tell it to loop video. So what you have to do is you come in here, you select all the settings that you want, you go down, go down, go down, and you can turn off the annoying beeping if you really want to. So you go down, you select all your settings, then you go into format, and you format the camera, and it saves all of your settings. And then for some reason it shuts immediately back off. But yeah, if you don't format it like that with all the settings the way you want them, every time you turn on the camera, it'll record minute-long clips. It'll be one minute, new clip, one minute, new clip, and, and it took me a while to figure that out because uh, the camera doesn't really come with any instructions. You just kind of got to navigate it and figure it out on your own or look it up online. But what's the fun in that when you can figure it out on your own? Okay, so back to the menus. Video resolution, looping video, that's what turns it to 10-minute clips rather than minute-long clips. Your timestamp, you can set your exposure, your photo resolutions, which are like 12 megapixel, 8 megapixel, 6, and either 4 or 2. Um, burst photo, time lapse, continuous lapse. You can set your power frequency, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, or auto. You can set your language, date and time, sound indicators. You can flip it upside down depending on how you mounted it. There's a screen saver and power saver. It helps save battery a little bit. We already covered format. There's reset, and then it displays what version it's currently on. I guess you can update it uh, via Wi-Fi at some point. So we're going to navigate all the way back up here. Whoops, there we go. And then just select our way out, and we're back at the camera. So to connect to Wi-Fi, you just press the down button here. It'll pop up waiting for Wi-Fi connection. There's actually an app that you can download for your phone. You can transfer things to your phone, and you can actually, uh, and I wish I had screen grab on the phone so I could show you, you can go through, you can control some things on the camera, you can uh, change some settings, and you can actually manually switch between photo, video, you can manual shutter from your mobile device, and all that good stuff. It's, you know, it's a convenient way, and you can uh, review clips when you're connected via Wi-Fi. So, it's a neat little tool to have built into the camera. I guess now we can cut to uh, some footage, I suppose. In we go, latch, and it's watertight. With these buttons, you kind of really got to press it to get it to go. Luckily, you can hear the beep if you keep the beep going. All right, sink's full, in we go. There we go. No water getting in. It's all staying out. And out it comes, safe and sound. I guess the only thing that's left to show you is the action cam in action. Not bad for a $60 GoPro Amazon knockoff. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. It's a go anywhere, get wet, have fun, do anything camera. All for $60 with accessories included. It leaves a little bit to be desired in the battery and overheating departments, but I wouldn't really worry about it too much. You're not going to be shooting a feature-length movie on this thing, so it's not going to be running more than a few minutes at a time. And as I said earlier, 
It serves my purpose. I only need it to work 20 minutes at a time, so I'm not too worried about it. The video quality is on par with other action cams I've seen out there. It seems like a pretty easy thing to replicate no matter what manufacturer. So, yes, I absolutely do recommend this. And, in fact, I might buy another one with my own money. Remember, this was a present. This one does a pretty good job. Could be better, but it's not all that bad. So there you have it, folks. That's my take on the Fitfort action cam. If you're a consumer who's in the market for this type of device, I hope this video has helped you. Taking into account the video quality, the accessories you get, and the low price, this is definitely one to consider if you're shopping for an action cam. I know I'm excited to put mine to use here in about a week at PBIR during Track Night in America. It's going to be nice to have the camera on my helmet recording tons of footage that I can put into a video later on if I so choose, and I can go back, review it, and continue to improve my technique on track, which that's an invaluable tool right there. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <clears throat> oh, front camera. Yeah, good job, self.